Welcome back to another episode of My Conversation Thursdays. Today we are at chapter 52 for bridal skincare routines before the actual day wedding. As again I've gone through on our previous episode, Benji will be here with us all the way and he will be here to guide us on our grooms and bridal skincare and makeup. Hi guys, <laughs> it's me again, I'm Benji. Okay, so for those that haven't watched last week's video, my name is Benji and uh, I've been making a industry for about 10 years. So for our first question is, why is the night before skincare routine very important for brides for their wedding the next day? Okay. So basically, the take home about the skincare routine the day before the actual day is to not try anything new. Okay? Because a lot of people will say that uh, the routine they say they will do is oh well, so because it's the night before the wedding, they will usually do for something more expensive with their mask to make sure their skin is texture is moist enough. But uh, if you have been following up with the normal routine that you usually should do, uh, a normal routine, daily day routine should work smart. So don't do anything that is too, let's say, extensive. You say that oh, I do, I do much for my wedding day. I need to put something less eye mask, everything mask uh, that is extensive. So just do a normal day-to-day -day routine that you usually have. So the night before, usually what I recommend is to do a sheet mask. If let's say you got to have something that's very sexy. If you know that that day is the day that you actually have to dry your skin, then you can put something that's more expensive. It is the quality of skin type. But uh, uh, I would recommend ladies not to try anything new because I do have tried every time when you see the night before the wedding, you try something new product, a new product that is recommended by the doctor, by the friend. You say that oh, it's so good before the wedding, but you didn't. But it really depends on each individual. Some people is good for them, but some people might not have. You might have some outbreak just right before the wedding day itself. No. So uh, I will always recommend uh, ladies or brides to usually check through first, you know, before they apply onto their skin itself. Yeah. But uh, a good routine, a good night routine is to just use a day sheet mask just before the wedding day, and then uh, in the morning, if you have time, you can use a sheet mask. If you have no time, it's fine. Which I feel that if you already have a good skin texture to start with, maybe uh, the rest will work well. Right. Sometimes when the bride is here when they are doing their makeup with Benji or other makeup artists, I actually get them always say like you want to apply the makeup and or not, you want to apply the eyelash and or not. Mm. So I'm just curious actually what is the difference? Like what do you uh, is it a compulsory thing for the brides to actually okay. apply? I would not say that applying a uh, certain type of uh, skincare serum and pill is a mask mask for the bride, but uh, it's definitely advisable because depending uh, in skincare you do know that some skincare is from night, some skincare is from morning, some skincare is a toner is to balance a page level, some is for pre-makeup, some is for after makeup. So uh, all these uh, are uh, what we will say the makeup artists, professional makeup artists will be advising you according to your skin texture. Uh, but a take home that you can say that see, if let's say it's needed for you is to check through with the makeup artist to see what kind of skin texture that you have and what kind of effects that this product gives to you. So that is the most important because you yourself will know that if this product is actually suitable for your skin type, at the same time, what kind of function it does for your skin Let's say if the bride wants to do any type of cosmetic procedure. So mm -hmm. all these like, uh, I guess, bigger procedures, mm -hmm. right? When do you recommend they should do it? Okay, uh, for, okay, you speak for a few types of uh, procedure. Teeth <laughs> whitening is pretty fine, you know, there's no effect uh, on your on the actual wedding day or even before your wedding day is fine, anytime you do that. Uh, for those that are doing those uh, eyebrow tattoo or especially eyelash extension or even lip tattoo, every procedure has a different downtime. For semi permanent uh, procedure, I'll usually recommend them to do two months to one and a half months away their wedding day before the actual day itself. Reason why is because depending on which artist you go to and which kind of uh, aesthetic person that helps you do a like lip tattoo or also your eyebrow, uh, the downtime is actually finished from one month to one and a half months. So to be basic, one and a half months is fine. So if you're going to do your eyebrow, do one month for the time. So you can understand how uh, it actually lightens up or even for this, how red or how pinkish or how coral you want the lips to be like. So if let's say something starts something you like, at least you can do the up chop, you know what I mean? So yeah, you still have enough time for your before the actual wedding day itself. Now, so the bride is actually doing it one and a half months after and it fits off, it really mm. looks good. Does this mean by they do not need to apply makeup for the bridal? For the bridal, uh, uh, your day wedding? They do still need to apply makeup on because uh, semi-permanent makeup, right? Like I say, it fits off mm -hmm. uh, according to your skin texture. If you're someone that's very oily on your skin tone, the, the fading is even faster. So, a uh, best way to do it is that uh, uh, you can 
do it, it gets the base done. I mean, if, if maybe enable the makeup piece to get an easier job done, oh. maybe not necessarily all the time, uh, but uh, it's definitely you still need to put on makeup. So, uh, makeup is something that you can skip away even if you have some uh, sample from the makeup on the face itself. Uh, since we're always talking about brides, you know, with the skincare and makeup, what about the grooms? You forgot about the guys, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so basically, uh, through Espino Rise, uh, uh, there's getting more and more guys that are doing actually skincare routine and also makeup on a daily basis. Not always at all, but the trend is actually building up on grooming for guys. So, say for the ladies, don't try anything expensive new before your wedding day. Usually, guys tend to oil it up easily. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Usually, guys tend to uh, have an oily skin base. I recommend them to uh, do a skincare routine that actually does some scrubbing. Okay, before the wedding day, do a scrub and then some good moisturizing and toner is a pass for the guys that are doing all those routines. For guys itself, right, makeup wise, not so much, but usually more on the brows or maybe some facial hair that you want to touch on. Some guys have some suppers they want to touch on to do that. Or even though on the night before, they will be able to maybe do some routine to do some healthcare routine to get their hair even more come out more for the month. Just before the wedding day itself. These are some minor, very small tips for the guys to do. Take note of if you are someone that will uh, need to trendy routines for skincare and also for facial hair. But I think a little goes a long way, right? Yes, yes. Like need... for guys, maybe they do a bit of eyebrow, little bit high actually, they look very like yes. structured. Usually, uh, most of the grooms that I do make up for, or maybe the issue that the guys usually face is uh, the brown hair is very sparse. Uh... Not every guy has a lot of brown hair to start with. So, for grooms that have, or for grooms or for men that have a lot of sparse hair, uh, it will be good that we can do some, uh, uh, maybe you can do even semi permanent makeup if you want to, and then the makeup piece on that day will be, you have to touch up a bit. So, guys, yeah, go and invest on your new eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> and also, what are the types of products that probably brides and grooms have to stay away for the day before the actual day wedding? Usually, for uh, products uh, to stay away, it's usually a lot of new products. Stay away. Yeah. So, like I said, I will always be sharing with you guys. Uh, do not try new products just right before your actual. It's always good to try a few months before your actual. So maybe you know that okay, I heard a good review, you know, from reviews to Instagram to say that how good this product is. Uh, I would say reviews are good to understand the knowledge of the product, but it's always best to try on yourself first, do a skin test on your G first, and then try your skin how well is it, does it really show effect before you take it as a normal daily routine for yourself to be applied every day. Definitely one thing to take note of is never try new stuff on your skin because you might not know what is the reaction or some skin allergies that you have for certain products itself. I mean I understand that as a makeup artist, you also take care of your skin a lot, you also take care of your skin very well, right? Mm -hmm. What are the... Okay, don't worry about the dietary aspects, what to eat and what not to eat. Okay, definitely uh, uh, our diet plays a big part in uh, our day-to-day -day life and also our before actual wedding day itself. So usually just right before one week before actual wedding day, try to take lesser fried food. Because sometimes even though you, you are so careful with your skincare, you do good routine, you clean your face very well, you clean your face very well, but sometimes you still have health breaks, you don't have to come close by. So the dietary of one person is very important. If you take something that's too high in true content, or also there's things that is too high in quite a lot of fried food, these are things that will cause you to have any issue or any prone skin at a certain period of time. So of course our body usually will detox every single day, but it takes time to detox so. So a good dietary will be good. I mean it also good it helps you to get slimmer, you know, even in photo shoot yourself or also in the actual day photo shoot it looks better. But uh, 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 whatever you eat will actually have to be taken into consideration. Try to go for something that's more high fiber and also more water content in it. The uh, vegetable food is fine. Uh, just wanted to take note that a lot of people usually like to take, they say that, okay, I can't take meat, you know, I can't take fried food, I take a lot of fruits. But just to let you know that fruits also carry a lot of sugar content in it. Of course, it's natural good uh, sugar, but anything that's overdose is not good for the system. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Overdose, or do I drink a lot of water? Um, do it cause water retention? Okay, uh, water retention has always been a myth within a lot of people say, oh, you know, I drink too much water, I have water retention. But uh, after much research, after finding, I mean, after doing a lot of skincare routine, sometimes uh, it's the diet that causes the water retention. Mm -hmm. This is not really important. So one thing that will cause water retention very higher probably is to cut down on salt. Things that is high in sodium will cause you to have water retention. Yeah. 
Yeah, so one thing to cut out is salt, you know, same thing of course sugar you should cut down, but salt is the main thing that causes you to have water retention. The thing before, even if you drink a lot of water, it's fine. Some people even tell me, say that, you know, every day drink a glass of water is a good thing. I mean, I definitely think that drinking water is good, but uh, our body's immune system will actually know what is good for our body. Oh yeah, that makes <laughs> so sense. So that makes sense, right? <laughs> Just drink water. Don't yes. wait till you feel thirsty, I ah, can still wait a bit better. That, that's, it's your body telling you that you need to hydrate yourself. So if you feel that you're thirsty, start drinking water. Yes, yeah. of course. So that's one thing you should take for long. Thank you, Benji, for all the tips and tricks that you guys have given us. I think we actually learned quite a bit, even though this is just half of our table. We have actually come to the end of chapter 52 for our bridal and groom's makeup and skincare video. So hopefully we will see you in our next video and chapter Hey guys, so before we actually come to an end of this video, remember to follow us at all our social media platforms and if again, if you have any suggestions on our content for our videos, please make sure to actually send an email or even WhatsApp us for new ideas and new suggestions. Thank you so much and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye! Bye guys! Bye.